Hey everyone, welcome back to Ova's Top 10 series. Uh, today we'll discuss the uh, section A9, which is using components with known vulnerabilities. This section is a bit different because uh, you're not directly exploiting something, this code, uh, which is written by the developers or by the application owners. So what does the definition say here? The definition says components such as libraries, frameworks, and other software modules run with the same privileges as the application. So here we are talking about the libraries frameworks which are inherited, not developed by the application owner or software owner. If a vulnerable component is exploited, such as like an you know, open source or third party packages, such an attack can facilitate serious data loss or server takeover. Application and API using the component with known vulnerabilities may undermine application defense and enable various attacks and impacts. So that's straightforward, right? So if you have a simple loose component or unverified component that can pretty much exploit your entire application. And that's why during the penetration test, you need to focus a lot. And this is why it's in the OWASP top 10, because we still see there is a there is not a good integrity or, or good mechanism for the companies to manage the inventory of all the software packages. They do not have a way to uh, like, you know, patch these packages. They do not have a way to uh, replace with the new packages and, and like, you know, probably uh, review the packages before they integrate. So th there are a lot of loose, loose ends in this uh, process. And that's why it really uh, makes a big difference when you when you're pen testing. You focus on this aspect a lot. Uh, and and, uh, and on an average, I think every application has more than hundred packages, which are either open source or developed by the third party. And if you don't keep track of it, of course, if there is one loose component which has the same privilege, right? It it's going to have at least same privilege how uh, the application code is running, and then uh, the attacker will be able to exploit. So later in the video, we'll see how do we uh, the real example of how the exploitation uh, worked in the past. And and now let's talk about the pen test tips. So the first one you need to review. Uh, first assessment you need to do is what are the packages that you can uh, so of course like you know it depends if you're doing the black box versus white box if you're doing black box testing you start reviewing the client side code and you review the js libraries that you're getting the response from the server and then you check the version of it so for example if you're if you receive like if you see they are running jquery version so and so a certain jquery version has an uh, issue such as xss and other other uh, vulnerabilities or remote code execution so you make sure like if you if you uh, like a bootstrap version or any any web server version so if you if you find anything uh, keep note of it and then what you can do is you can search uh, for CVEs for that particular version. Like there is NVD and there, there are a lot of databases out there where you can search for available exploit or vulnerabilities for uh, so and so version. And then of course, go ahead and exploit it. Uh, of course, if you have a permission and, and try to uh, confirm that, yeah, this is indeed a vulnerable package or uh, not. But in any case, even if you are not able to exploit during the pen test, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like it doesn't, say that uh, the owner should not update the package because uh, it probably it might not have been exploited in the given amount of time but one can exploit it uh, right uh, if the attacker has like a few months of time before exploiting uh, to research on this application they can easily do that uh, the next thing is if you have the white if you're doing let's say white box testing like you can review the architecture you can check several things first off you will start with layout uh, like you know make the inventory of all the packages that's used by the application uh, you can what you can also do is uh, during the architecture review you can also see whether these packages are being loaded dynamically uh, when the application or when the customer calls or are those part of the uh, internal packages because that's also massive because if you are loading dynamically, you don't know, uh, like you know, uh, the location from where the package is coming off, coming from. You don't control that location, so anyone can hijack and and give you the malicious uh, malware uh, or backdoor from that location. So, uh, so focus on on this type of threats, uh, and and uh, of course, then you also got you'll have more visibility in terms of uh, what are the libraries or client side code that this uh, application is running. And, and go the same route, like search for CVEs, 
uh, search for exploit and and this this is like you know much smoother or straightforward route in terms of how do we uh, find out if the application is using the vulnerable components or not next thing the example i'm going to talk about is very famous like equifax uh, breach uh, which happened like you know back in 2017 and uh, during the bridge, the personal data of more than 100 million customers was compromised. And this information included uh, several things like names and social security and birth dates and addresses, etc. And the breach happened because Equifax is using Apache Sturds. And Apache Sturds had a vulnerability. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail because like you can you can go into this link and, and uh, read through what what was the vulnerability. It has like, you know, uh, a CVSS score of 10, uh, very critical. Uh, so what attacker did was so uh, this actually came out uh, sometime in uh, 2017 and Equifax was not able to update it right away. Uh, and we must be wondering why, like why? applications or software owners cannot update the pack component right away it's difficult like imagine you are driving a car and then you are trying to change the UI while, while car is driving so there are hundreds of customers relying on their website and on the production and this is on the production and and you are trying to replace this package with another package or upgrade it while the customer uh, making sure the customer has no impact so they had some delay on updating it and by then uh, attacker had exploited the issue in the apache stars and, and got the information over 100 million customers so that is uh, that is the main reason like why you need to uh, uh, like you know fo um, keep a focus on there are so many tools out there as well like npm and uh, artifactory so there are so many tools who can manage these uh, components and you can keep an eye on it uh, next thing is how do we prevent it? So I think I, I, I talked a bit about prevention already But uh, you need to make sure you have the continuous inventory like keep track of packages have it reviewed by the infosec or legal and uh, like you know uh, other teams uh, Before you integrate it uh, like you know software developer has to go through like this process has to be baked in into the SDLC so you do not just import any unwanted uh, or like you know untrusted package to your application there is also a software called was dependency check uh, which i like a lot uh, which tells you uh, lists all the dependencies and tells you like you know which one to update so that's also a good software that uh, your organization can use like if you cannot afford the professional or like you know enterprise uh, softwares for this inventory uh, you can at least use the open source one which is was dependency check i put the link in the description so you can recommend to your customers um, and uh, let's say like you know uh, we always talk about defense in depth in the security uh, so this is the last prevention technique is that if you are not able to update uh, this right away the package right away then what you can do is you can deploy uh, like WAF, uh, virtual application firewall uh, and of course you have to configure the rules and everything but it will give you some protection against some known common attacks until you uh, update the component so this is a very uh, like you know systematic way of preventing of course the primary defense is going to be update the package and know what which packages you are using that will be the primary defense all right so that's it i want to discuss uh, we are almost at the end of the oas top 10 one last topic to cover i'll i'll cover it in the uh, future weeks uh, but until then if you have any questions feel free to reach out and check out the comments uh, sorry, check out the description as well. Uh, I have also uh, put the time left on this video uh, as, as someone has suggested uh, as well as I have also put the links uh, which I have been referring into this uh, video and don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the video. Uh, thank you so much and bye bye.